These are five easy ways to make educational videos and I've ranked them. So you've decided that you would like to make some educational videos. Good idea. We can never have too many different explanations for students or young people or adults needing to learn. It'll do you good, it's good practice, it raises your profile and you can build up a bank of teaching resources that you will refer to in years to come. But if you're just starting, there can be a little bit of an overwhelm about how do you even make the things. I'm gonna give you five ways that you can pick from which you can get started with right now. So the first option is to record live or near live. And what you should do is use props. For ease, I've given this a free. This is pretty simple to do because there's no editing afterwards. You just have to live with your mistakes. It does take time though, because it's best if you're gonna plan exactly what you're gonna say and even have time to do a couple of rehearsals too. It can be done though with nothing but your webcam and a browser. For quality, I'm only giving this a two. If you take the time to plan your video well, one of the things you can include are visuals, perhaps props, perhaps some text, a few key terms on cards that you can hold up or pictures or objects that you want to talk about in the video. This can increase the engagement and the quality of what you do. But because you'll be streaming live to the internet, your quality does depend on your connection speed, the quality of your webcam and the quality of your microphone. So most of the time, live streaming is gonna be pretty low quality. And all those ums and errs, they're gonna be in there forever and they can be difficult to avoid. There isn't really a way to remove them afterwards. If you set up a YouTube channel and it's verified, you can pretty much get started live streaming straight away. There's so many apps like X and TikTok and the other one, Instagram, they're all trying to encourage live stream as well. So it's pretty easy to get started live streaming. I think if you're considering going down the live streaming path, accept that initially there's not gonna be all that many people watching and that's okay. So the next really good idea is to record into OBS. And actually I'm now recording with OBS and I'm recording the OBS interface. It's a little bit daunting at first. It's not that easy to use initially but after a short amount of time, it's really simple to use. You have to essentially set up sources and you can make scenes, different layouts of cameras and PowerPoints and things, and you can just record your screen really easily and you can add in a webcam. So I think this is a really simple and straightforward way to actually make educational videos because you could have the webcam either quite large like this, or you could have it just in one corner like so, and then your PowerPoint and whatever you want to stream, whatever you want to share as the main part of the screen. OBS is not easy to use, but it is a free tool that you can record or stream pretty much to anywhere. Anything that you th could think of that you wanted to show on screen, you can do that with OBS. You can have multiple cameras, you can have graphics laid out as well as pre-planned transitions or even pre-recorded sections in the video. It isn't easy, but it is powerful. And you know, it might just be a skill which is worth learning. So for ease, I've just given it a two. For quality though, I've given it a five. One great thing that you can do is you can make your own screen layout. So if I now move the actual interface off here and I take myself a PowerPoint, for instance, here you can now see that my normal teaching PowerPoint is displayed on the screen. I can just work through it in exactly the same way as I would do in a classroom. I can have a little webcam in the corner or I could take up a larger share of the screen or indeed I could add anything like a visualizer in so I could have multiple cameras in the same stream. It's really quality. You can basically set up any variation of images, video feeds, graphics on the screen that you could possibly think of. You just need the patience to learn how to do it. There are loads of tutorials on YouTube on how to manage OBS. A really good setup, for instance, would be to use your laptop's webcam and the visualizer, and you could model away to your heart's content. Talking of visualizers, thank you so much to IPVO for sponsoring this video. Let's just show you how easy it is to set it up into OBS. I've been using IPVO visualizers at my school for years. In fact, at my school, every single classroom has an IPVO visualizer. Normally it's the V4K, but this is the V4K Pro that I'm gonna show you today. The V4K is probably the most popular classroom visualizer. Well, my new school uses the VZR, which are really excellent visualizers. And they also have HDMI outputs that can go directly into the board. IPVO V4K is one of the most popular visualizers for good reason. So now all I have to do to add that into OBS, simply select it from the drop down list and activate it. And now I'm showing my visualizer currently full screen but I can have it taking up the majority of the screen, for instance, with V in the corner, perhaps with the key information. What I've had before is a calculator in the corner of the screen there. And now I can display anything that I want to model here in front of me. Perhaps I want to teach people how to type. <laughs> it has single autofocus mode as well, which is really good, so it won't sort of jump around and try and focus on the near, near ground. It'll stay focused on what I'm doing. And if I want to at any point to go back to my PowerPoint, I can just press this and it'll show what was on the screen before that. One great feature about the V4K is it has an AI enhanced microphone here on it, 
which you can select as an audio source from OBS. That will let you cut through the noise and capture your voice. And document cameras are the best way to model to students how to use a specific piece of equipment or how to tackle exam questions. But their use doesn't stop there. If you need to share documents in a meeting, in a clear, sharp 4K image, from a camera which, as you saw, just plugs and plays. It couldn't be easier. Do you need to showcase or discuss a new model, a product or a prototype? Just flick on the visualizer and show whatever is in front of you. Do you want to discuss or develop new ideas with a pen and paper? The document camera will let you just present your ideas as naturally as just sketching them out in your notebook. It's really frictionless and it's more affordable than you might think. Check out the product links in the description below. Thanks once again to IPVO for sponsoring this video. Don't forget, it's great that it has a little light as well. It's good to add that to the ambient lights. You might have guessed the next one will be just use a visualizer, just only use a visualizer. And I've given this an ease rating of four. If you own a visualizer like the Apivo, you can just switch it on and you can start presenting. The Apivo also comes with a really good quality microphone, which is great as well because you're recording right next to your mouth when you're modeling. And the closer a microphone is to your mouth, the better the sound quality is going to be. I like that method because you get a good quality of sound and a good quality of video feed with very little effort. That's why I've given this a four for ease. If you take the time to plan well and you think about what you're showing and you think about what you're saying, then you can actually produce really good quality educational videos in this way. And it should be very little effort. And what's more, your face doesn't need to appear on screen. Although I do believe that actually having a face on screen can make videos just that bit more engaging. As for quality, you're only really gonna get a three out of this. You could, of course, take the footage and you could edit it a little later. For example, you could speed up bits where you're maybe writing out a passage or drawing out a diagram and you're not really saying a lot. But generally speaking, just having a top-down view and with a voiceover, that's not massively engaging. But give it some thought, get some key things like lighting and framing and props avoid echo in the room, and you can make really good quality videos in this way. So just try and think about making the video really useful and engaging that students will enjoy watching it. Another method you could use, so I think fourth method, is to record a voiceover and then to film. Now this is the least easy, this is an ease of one. It's not easy because there are lots more steps to creating the final video. You need to record the sound first, and then you need to record the visuals, and then you'd need to combine them in a video editing software. Now I've said record voice first and then record the visuals, but you can actually do this either way around. You could record the video first and then record the voiceover if you prefer to work in that way. The good thing about this method though is that with each thing that you're doing, either recording the visuals or recording the sound, you're able to concentrate on that one thing only, and that can make you do a better job of the voiceover and the visuals. Combining them later and syncing them up though is a bit more tricky. This can give you really quality outcomes though, and I'll give it a quality rating of a four. It can produce very nice results. There are examples of hugely popular YouTube channels that have used this method. If you take the time to write a really engaging script, then record that in the best quality microphone that you have in a small, not very echoey space. Maybe somewhere with lots of curtains would be useful. And really take your time and really try to read it in the most engaging way possible. Then you can draw the visuals. And again, you can try and focus on drawing them as well as you can. Or you could film B-roll or you could source images or video assets and then you edit them together in the video editor. This is a really popular method with some actual pros, so it's definitely one to try out at some point. Finally, a really popular one with teachers is just use PowerPoint. Now, PowerPoint itself has the ability to record presentations into it, and then at the end, you can simply export that as a video. I'm going to presume that if you're an educator, then you're reasonably familiar with using PowerPoint, and that you already have a Microsoft Office subscription. If that's the case, then this should be the easiest one of all the methods I'm sharing with you today. It should be an ease five. The nice thing is that if you're an educator, you're already quite good, probably, at making engaging PowerPoints. You've probably got quite a lot of skills already. It's a real easy one, a real easy time saver as well. You can simply click here here on the record button. There are a few different options, start from the beginning or from the current slide. And what you'll see happen when I click this is that I actually get a recording interface, which is actually over on my other monitor. So I'll, I'll show you that. It even displays at the top here, you can see it displaying your slide notes and you can click record, do a little countdown. And now it's recording everything that I'm saying directly onto this slide. And it's gonna save that on the slide. And you can think about it building up a bunch of clips so that each slide is one clip. So when I stop now, that recording is saved to that slide. You can even add in a webcam and now you can present 
and talk through what's on the slide and it will record you as well. You don't have to do that, of course. It's also going to record all of the transitions and animations that I do. So I can just simply present as I would in a classroom with my PowerPoint as I'm really used to. It's just frictionless. If you weren't happy with that recording, then you can retake the recording at any point or you can delete the recording. If you go back into the PowerPoint editing view, then that recording is now sitting there as a little individual element that I can move around, I can resize and put in a different part of the slide if I wish, just like everything is editable in PowerPoint. One thing that I will say is that you should make sure that you set up your slides in 16 by nine mode, just very simple to do. Design up here, slide size. For now, even though I hadn't done that before, I can still pop myself over there in the corner, down in this corner maybe, and give myself plenty of room for all of the objects that are already on the screen. Once you've done that, once you've recorded to every single slide, you can go ahead and go file export and just go create a video. And the option is just a full HD video, use the recording timings and narr narrations and click create video. And if you don't have an animation on a slide to go from one to the other, it will stay on the slide for whatever length of time you set. Create video exports it as a 1080p video file. Super easy to do. I really like the fact that you can just record each slide individually so you can do it a couple of times to get each slide right and then you just click export and it knits it all together. I also really like that you can do it all within the PowerPoint app. So it's an app that you're probably familiar with and that you'll just get along with really well. I've given this a quality of a one and that's because you can make great visuals in PowerPoint, but it does tend to be that mostly, most PowerPoints are pretty dry. And most people are so familiar with the generic PowerPoint styles that they're not that engaging anymore. And this is an issue for this type of video. But take your time to get things like animations right. Or of course you can use a drawing tablet to highlight things and add diagrams and draw at the same time. And you can actually make a really engaging presentation in that way. So remember when you're making it that it is a video you're creating. So the less time that the screen is just static on information, the more interesting that video is going to be. So if I show you a little summary of all those scores here, you can see that recording an OBS or just simply using a visualizer, they have the highest combined score. But really all of these are great ways to get started making educational videos. Perhaps you'll be like me and perhaps you'll get the bug and you'll want to learn how to make really high quality videos. And I can help with that too. Perhaps check out my book, which is called Teach on YouTube, where I go into all the knowledge and all of the skills that I've used to build this YouTube channel. And I recommend that you do. It's been the best decision of my professional life to start making educational videos. And let me know in the comments which one of these five techniques you're gonna give a go to and any questions you have about any of them. And let me know also if you'd like me to go in depth on any of these techniques. Now teaching on YouTube was the best decision that I ever made professionally. And honestly, it got me out of a bit of a professional slump. And now it's opened so many doors to amazing opportunities. And it still makes my day when a student stops by to say thanks for the educational content. So record with confidence, put yourself and your valuable knowledge and skills out there and have fun doing it. <laughs>